Secretary General of Hezbollah Party, Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah, stresses on the holy occasion of Ashura that resistance will defend Syria against the regional Takfiri attacks targeting it. In a joint press conference with his Egyptian counterpart, Lavrov stresses the importance of finding a political solution to the crisis in Syria through the Geneva Conference. The Syrian Arab army continues to make considerable progress in different areas, killing dozens of terrorists. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrullah has said Syria has embraced and supported the resistance in all its stages. We support Syrian dialogue and political action to solve the crisis there, he added. In his speech marking the religious Ashura day, Nasrullah said the presence of the resistance on the Syrian land aims at defending Lebanon and the Palestinian coast in the face of the international regional takfiri assault on Syria and the region. We will continue to be in Syria as long as this assault is there, Nasrullah affirmed. Hezbollah Secretary General said the resistance is ready with all its potentials and weapons to protect Lebanon and its fortunes and will continue to confront the Israeli threats. He pointed out that the resistance rejected all projects or partition, asserting the need for each country to preserve its territorial integrity and to wisely address its internal problems through dialogue and political solutions. Russia and Egypt have affirmed the importance of holding the Geneva II conference, rejecting military action and the attempt to use the humanitarian issues in Syria for the sake of bringing back foreign intervention. In a joint press conference, both countries expressed their intention to develop high levels of bilateral and military cooperation. In a press conference with his Egyptian counterpart, Nabil Fahmi, in Cairo, Lavrov said several Middle Eastern issues were discussed, particularly those related to the crisis in Syria. He added that common ideas were exchanged and the call for the Geneva II conference to solve the Syrian crisis through dialogue among all parties under the auspices of the international community and with its support. We know Egypt's role and activity for bringing about a peaceful settlement to the crisis in Syria, Lavrov said, adding that Russia and Egypt shared a joint positive assessment of the work carried out within the framework of eliminating the chemical weapons in Syria and implementing the UN program in this regard. Lavrov voiced his country's interest in seeing Egypt a stable state in the region on the basis of non-intervention and respect for the Egyptians' right to self-determination. On his part, the Egyptian foreign minister approved his Russian counterpart's viewpoints. He stressed Egypt's rejection of militarizing the Syrian issue and of foreign intervention in the country. A military source in Dara countryside pointed out that a Syrian Arab army unit set up an ambush for 20 terrorists, the majority of foreign nationalities, near the national forest between Tsil and Noah, killing all of them, including Saudi terrorist Hassan Salim al-Saudi, and confiscating their weapons and ammunition. In Damascus, a police source said that three citizens were killed and 22 others wounded following terrorist attacks by two explosive devices in Mardambeik Street and al Kalasa neighborhood in Damascus.
The Syrian Arab army gained full control on the city of Hajjera in Damascus countryside following a successful operation during which several tunnels used for smuggling weapons and ammunition were discovered. The army also captured dozens of terrorists affiliated with Al Nusra Front and Al Islam Brigade. A few days after restoring stability and security to Al Sabina town, the Syrian Arab army gained full control of the adjacent Al Hujaira town as army units continued to chase remnants of terrorists, inflicting upon them heavy losses. A military commander has said following the operation, the army discovered Al Qaeda black flags and several tunnels used by terrorists to smuggle arms and ammunition. He added that the army captured more than 40 terrorists who belonged to the terrorist Al Nusra Front. He pointed out that the army dismantled dozens of explosive devices planted by the terrorists in different streets and alleys. The Syrian TV reporter said that the armed groups wreaked havoc on public properties, including the schools, which were turned into bases for launching rockets and mortar shells. In Berze, the Syrian Arab army continues its operations inside the town with more determination to restore stability and peace to it. A military commander pointed out that a number of building blocks used for targeting civilians were cleared of terrorists as army units discovered a number of tunnels and dens used by gunmen to smuggle arms and move from one area into another. Our TV correspondent said the army discovered a new tunnel equipped with cameras and electric devices. It is five meters high that big tracks can pass through it. The Syrian Arab army has tightened control on the Big Mahin mountain, eliminating all the members of a terrorist group. Another army unit destroyed three vehicles loaded with ammunition and weapons in the surroundings of Mahin. The army also intercepted two terrorist groups who tried to infiltrate from Al Ghasibiye to Al Dwer village and from Al Wa'ar farms in the direction of Al Qarabis. The army killed and wounded the terrorists and destroyed two vehicles that were provided with machine guns and a bulldozer. Other army units eliminated terrorist gatherings in Al-Khalidiyye, Khalij Kisin and Al-Hadath, destroying three terrorist vehicles. In the city of Homs, all the members of a terrorist group were killed near Shamsi Pasha Mosque in Al-Qusur, Babhud and Al-Warsha neighborhoods. Prime Minister Wa'il al-Halaqi has affirmed the solid political and historical relations between Syria and Russia, which have spared the region the danger of wars and restored balance to international political relations. Receiving the Russian ambassador to Damascus, Mr. Azamatullah Kol Muhammadov, and Dr. Gia Kotishtel, the deputy chairman of the Russian Soyuz oil company, Dr. Al-Halaqi, said the growing strategic political relations between the two friendly countries should be coupled with the expansion of the economic, trade and industrial relations between them. The Russian ambassador on his part expressed the Russian people's and leadership's confidence that the Syrian people are capable of confronting all challenges and will come out of the current crisis victorious. The Minister of Culture held a meeting with members of Parliament representing Damascus and al Raqqa governorates to discuss the efforts exerted to protect the archaeological heritage in Syria. Minister of Culture Dr. Lubana Mshawih stressed that all efforts are being coordinated with government and civil activities to protect the rich archaeological heritage from destruction and theft by the armed terrorist groups. For their part, al Raqqa Assembly members pointed out that the civil society in the governorate should double efforts to protect archaeological sites from the armed gangs who seek to destroy Syria's ancient civilization. The appreciation of the Syrian Arab Army's big efforts and sacrifices, the Revolution's Youth Union Damascus branch has organized a blood donation campaign. A group of students say the campaign is an indication of our people's great love and glorification of our heroic army who is defending the country and Arabism. They stress determination to rebuild what the terrorists have destroyed and to continue to be strong in the face of all hostile schemes. 
childhood media during the crisis and children's psychological and social characteristics and the impact of the media on them were the main topics discussed on the final day of the first National Childhood Media Forum. The participants underlined the importance of mastering the skills of communication with children, particularly during crisis, referring to the media role in shedding light on issues related to education and culture to ensure better communication with children. Now over to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back. The Minister of Tourism has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Export Development and Promotion Agency for developing the joint work and enhancing the cooperation with the agency. The memorandum includes forming a joint committee to develop an annual plan for participating in the international exhibitions, in addition to exchange the information and promotional articles that help to promote the economy, tourism and investment in Syria. Minister of Industry Kamal al-Din Ta'may asserted the importance of continuing the work in the industrial companies to provide the local market with necessary products. The minister also inspected today the production lines in the industrial company Kanar and glass company in Al-Qadam area, noting that the implementing rate reached 55%. He also added that the ministry imported the needed equipment to develop the work in the near future. The director of the grain silos branch in Homs Governorate said that the central processing unit which manufactures the equipment of the expansion projects of the silos has implemented four new projects in several provinces with a storage capacity of 80,000 tons of wheat. The director also indicated that the branch supplied the projects with necessary mechanical and electrical equipment as two projects were implemented in Al Hasaka Governorate. U.S. crude oil was little changed after the biggest increase in a week. The futures swung between gains and losses after the industry-funded American Petroleum Institute said that the crude supplies increased 599,000 barrels last week. Brent for December settlement, which expires today, gained 43 cents to reach 107 U.S. dollars a barrel. European stocks advanced rebounding from two days of losses after the chairman of the Federal Reserve said that the U.S. economy must improve before monetary stimulus is paired. U.S. stock index futures rose, indicating the Standard & Poor's 500 index will extend an all-time high. Japanese shares also jumped, with the Nikkei stock average closing at its highest since May. For a second day after Federal Reserve Chairman nominee backed stimulus until the economy and labor market improve, reducing concern that the central bank's bond buying program will be scaled back soon. While locally, the Jewelers Assembly set the price of the 21 karat gold at 5,900 Syrian pounds per gram, while the Rashadi golden coin was set at 43,000 Syrian pounds and the English coin was set at 48,700 Syrian pounds. Finally, the yen weakened to a two-month low against the U.S. dollar after data showed that Japan's economic growth slowed last quarter, adding to the case for the central bank to boost stimulus. Japan's currency declined versus all of its 16 major counterparts.
Canada's dollar rebounded from almost the weakest level in two months on speculation the Canadian economic recovery is gathering steam and Federal Reserve policymakers will prolong its bond purchases. This will end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in news, syria online.sy. Till next Saturday, have a peaceful weekend.